Hello and welcome to another fun art lesson. I'm Montmartre and I'm really glad that you found us. The suggestion for today's lesson was posted on our Facebook page and you can find that here. Now if you're not a member already then you really should be because it's a great place for creative people like you to talk to one another. So today's lesson is going to be really fun and really easy. So let's get into it. So I've chosen to create my painting along three canvases and that's called a trip ditch. And the best way to paint our three canvases is to nest them one on top of each other. Now, I want the background to look really nice and lush and red. So I'm using the dimension paints but I'm using pearl wine red, permanent red and brilliant red. And I'm going to apply the paint directly from the tube. And I'm going to sculpt the paint with my favorite brush, the number 12 angle. So let's get this paint on. Rather than have the background flat, I'm going to create a spiral texture. First I lay down the brilliant red. My idea is that it will be lighter in the middle, getting darker as I work my way out. In between the brilliant red, I lay in some of the darker permanent red and the even darker pearl wine red. This is mainly on the edges. It doesn't look like there is much difference between these colours, but it's the subtle change that looks effective when I blend them all together. The trick here is not to over blend the colours and keep to a circular spiral pattern. I don't want the coat to be too smooth. I want to create interest. Now, when you do this, just be careful because this paint gets absolutely everywhere. It's on your nose. Oh. Because this is more of a decorative interior design type piece, I'm going to paint the sides as well. This can give a piece a more finished look. Well that's lovely and dry. Now I'm going to apply some Silver Series Orange. This colour will really pop on top of that red. Again I apply my paint directly from the tube. Obviously the harder you squeeze the tube, the more paint exits. So you have quite a bit of control, but not that much control. Once our orange is dry, we can take the next step. And that is to cover the three canvases in a tinted glaze. And as if it couldn't get any more exciting, we're then going to drop some glitter into that wet glaze. Now the glitter that I'm using is from a Montmartre glitter art project that I did. So I lay my canvas flat and I pour over some acrylic gloss medium. Then sporadically dollop a few bits of red around and you'll notice that we haven't at any point up to this stage used a palette yet. I love painting directly out of the tube when I can. The paintings always come out looking audacious. While that medium is still wet I lay on my glitter. Oh look at that. I try to distribute the glitter as evenly as I can, but this is art. It's not going to matter if it's a bit heavier in one spot or another. Then we put a second coat of acrylic medium on. And what this does is basically encapsulate that glitter. Same goes for this coat. Just get it nice and even. Actually, the more coats of medium used, the deeper and more rich the background will look. Well, this is looking really great. It looks very glittery. Let us now add our flora. And by that, I mean our peach blossom branches. We're going to add our branches with the angled brush and some Payne's Grey. So squeeze a little bit out into your palette. And draw up the branches. 
we have created a downloadable image of these branches in regards to how I've positioned them. And this can be found at montmart.net. Just go to the TV section and download the peach tree lesson and you'll find it on the last page of that download. If you would like to create your own composition, just make sure the branches thin out at the end. Now, if you do make a boo-boo and put a branch in the wrong place, you can remove it quite easily. Just dampen a tissue and then just pat it off. And voila! Peach tree blossoms grow from a bud. And the best way to suggest them is to use the point of the angle and apply more pressure, then release it to create a stalk. Pop these buds wherever you feel. The one thing I have noticed is that they seem to be more prevalent closer to the end of the branch. Let us now apply the top coat to our peach tree branches. Now, our base coat is already done, so we only have to lay on our mid and our high key tones. The paints that I'll be using are the Dimension paints and I'll be using Zinc White and Burnt Umber. And I'll be applying it with my number six tack on flat. So let's get this paint on. So I create a highlight tone from White and Umber. Now I lay in some straight Umber into the middle of that branch and buds. Once the mid-tone is in, I bring in a little Payne's Grey in from the bottom. As I do this, I bear in mind the contours of the branch and create my strokes accordingly. Now into the top of the branch, I lay in my highlight tone. We can now create our blossoms and this will be the real icing on the cake. Our blossom colours will be created from cream, permanent red and medium yellow. So squeeze out a little bit of red and a little bit of cream and we will lay down the first main colour and that is a very very light pink. Now I shall be applying the paint with my favourite brush the angle and as we do this we must bear in mind that peach blossom flowers contain five petals. And peach trees blossom at different stages so put some buds in. Well that looks pretty good I don't think I need to go any further I don't want to overcook it but I think what it does need is a couple of blossoms that have been blown off. So we're gonna put some around here, maybe one here, here, and a couple there. This will add a little bit of drama, I think. Well, as much drama as a peach tree painting could have anyway. If you look at a peach blossom, it is a little bit darker near the base of the flower. So we're just gonna squeeze out a little bit of permanent red and darken that in. Just lay this into the base of each blossom. Once you've laid in this pink mix, lay in some permanent red. This colour shows only where the blossom meets the stalk. Next I lay in some pure white into the top of each petal to suggest a highlight and finally I add some medium yellow into the centre of each blossom. Well, I really hope you gained something from that. And if you're not already there now, then jump on our website at montmart.net. Thanks again for joining us. And remember, keep on painting. Mm -hmm.